Today, we're going to talk about the six success traps that you need to worry about as a real estate wholesaler. And I got to tell you, this is so, so, so important. You're going to love today's show. But before I jump into today's training, if you have not been over to nextlevelwholesaling.com and you haven't taken the assessment, what are you waiting for? Uh, this is actually something that my mentor gave me to get off the treadmill. I remember when I was uh, making money in real estate, I was working seemed like 56 hour, 50 to 60 hours a week. I was running around like a Chico May head cut off. I was barely, barely profiting and it seemed like money was flying out the window, but yet I was doing tons of deals and I'm like, man, what the heck do I do? My mentor created the next level wholesaling assessment for me and everything, everything changed. I turned my business around. I was working less hours. I was making seven figures and I was loving life. I want to do the same for you. And that's why I've modified the next level wholesaling assessment for you. Take it. It's totally free. It's going to be five minutes. It's going to ask you a few questions about your wholesaling business. And when you take it, it's going to open your eyes. You're going to be like, wow, wow, this is what I have to do. Totally free, totally confidential. Take the assessment. Let me know where you're at. Hit me up at, at Todd Toback. Love to hear from you on Instagram. And uh, man, just love to connect. So let's talk about these success traps. Because if you're a listener, you know, you might be a new wholesaler listening to this, but my podcast is mostly targeted to people doing deals. And if, uh, if you are listening, you most likely are doing some deals. You got to watch out for these success traps because I've seen people like melt down and then come to me and like, Todd, I was doing deals and all of a sudden things were great. And all of a sudden, like the past year, you know, it seems like things have slowed down and I'm not making any money. Like, what do I do? Okay, well, I got to tell you, here are some success traps that we will um, we'll educate you on, and hopefully you will recognize them. You'll put a stop to them. We'll get you on the track to the right spot where you'll be making seven figures and a highly profitable business, and you got your time back in no time. All right, so I see a lot of people that get some success. They're feeling good. They're on top of the world. They got their check. They put it on Facebook. They go to their local real estate club. Everyone's telling them they're a hero. High five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so cool. I'm the man. Yeah, you know what? Let's go to another market. Let's expand 20 markets in the next 12 months. Let's go. And they do just that. And <laughs> they all of a sudden start uh, marketing to other markets where they don't really know a whole lot about. Uh, they're totally spread thin and their, uh, their systems start to break down. Their deal size shrink. They got deals they can't sell. Their team is distracted. They're demoralized. And then their profit is like really, really, really in the dumps. And I got to tell you, going to a new market uh, is rarely a good idea because people are never maximizing their own market. And I got to tell you, in your current market, you have so many advantages. You know what people will pay. You can build a really great buyer's list. You can develop a really good relationship with a broker who could list your deals on the multiple listing service. You might have handymen. You might have private lenders. You uh, have leads that you can follow up with month after month after month after month. And in your database, you if you've been in this business for any length of time, you have people right now who want to do deals with you, who you have to call, who are ready to go. But instead, you're going to go to another market and call somebody else when you have somebody in your database who says, call me, call me, I'd love to do a deal. Now is the perfect time. But instead, you got distracted. So pull yourself back. Stay in the market that you're in. Focus, 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 focus. When you're netting a million dollars in your own market, I'll repeat that. When you're netting a million dollars in your own market, come to me and say, Todd, maybe I should go to another market. Other than that, stay where you are if you've already had some success. Remember, today is success traps. Success sometimes is the enemy of more success, right? Because you can get distracted. You think everything you do, you, everything you touch turns to gold. Believe me, you don't have the minus, Midas touch. Ask me how I know this. I'll tell you a quick story. Back in 2012, Man, I was killing it in San Diego. And I had my office full of sales reps, acquisition specialists, and I was pouring into them. And I'm like, let's take over the world. And so we're like, we're going to go to Cleveland. So we sent out 3,000 postcards. Oh, man, did we get phone calls. The phone would not stop ringing. We start locking up deals left and right. 
we lock up 20 contracts off 2,500 postcards. I'm going to repeat that. We locked up 20 contracts off 2,500 postcards. And you're thinking, Todd, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Well, it does sound amazing. But when any, everyone puts stuff on Facebook, like we've got 25 contracts, look at our deal board, we're amazing. You got to dig down. You got to get to the root. You got to find out all the facts. Because over the next two months, my team, literally spent all their time trying to sell these 20 contracts. And we totally lost focus of our home market in San Diego. How did it turn out? Well, short answer, badly. <laughs> out of the 20, we had to drop 18 of the 20 contracts, okay? We sold one for a $7,500 profit and we sold another one for a $3,200 profit. Now, I don't know about you, but if you listen to this podcast, that is a bad deal because I lost track of my highly successful San Diego business, 2012, for two months, distracted my team, demoralized them when they couldn't sell the deal because I thought I needed to, quote unquote, expand when I had just gold sitting in front of me with leads sitting right in front of us that we weren't calling. So call me when you are netting a million in your own market. Number two, not watching your profit and loss. I tell you what, when you're doing deals, it feels good. When you do a nice, fat, juicy check, uh, I love that. But one of the things that we don't like to do as an entrepreneur is books. We don't like to talk to a bookkeeper or, or, or uh, uh, communicate with a bookkeeper or get bookkeepers things that they're asking for. And because of that, most of you do not have a bookkeeper or books. And so you don't know how much money you are keeping or making. And I got to tell you, you got to keep an eye on your profit and loss. Don't tell me how much you're grossing. I want to know what you are netting. So the solution to that is get a bookkeeper. And I'll go one level further, is you need to have somebody that's going to communicate with your bookkeeper on a regular basis who does not need you to get that information. So I'm going to repeat that. You need someone who's going to communicate to your bookkeeper who does not need you to give the information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my bookkeeper read-only access to my bank account, right? So that they can see all the checks that are written and uh, all the deposits that are they're going. I'm also gonna give my bookkeeper permission to talk to my title company at any point. I'm also gonna have a virtual assistant who on my team, which I highly recommend that you have, will uh, have access to also read-only through our bank account. and also access to any of the invoices and closing statements so that they could send them to the bookkeeper on demand so that I'm not getting communicated with. And so every single month, I have a clean set of books. The 10th of every single month, I know what I made, what I grossed and netted, most importantly, netted every single month. Because at the end of the day, that's how you get freedom, when you are netting money. The next and also related is bragging about your gross profit or gross revenue versus Net, really, I just don't give a damn, okay? And if you listen to this, you know it's because I love you, all right? And I want to coach you at a very, very high level. Long story short, I want to hear what you're netting, and that's what you should care about. Do not sedate yourself or dilute yourself or distract yourself on gross numbers because it feels good, right? Let's get into net. How much are you making per month? And I got to tell you, if you have a wholesale business, you should be netting at least bare bottom Bottom of the barrel, 35% profit margin. More likely, you should be in that 50 to 60% range. That's where I want you if you run a team like I want you to. So number three is related to two, just heads up. Number four, scaling. Oh, scaling. I'm going to build this big, giant team and go on the beach. Hey, I want that for you. But the key is in this business, in this market, you need to do big, fat, juicy deals with a small team who can operate highly efficient, highly profitable. And when you've got that nailed down, then you move to the next step, right? Move intentionally, methodically, profitably. Have some patience, watch it, and then, and then do it again, okay? So don't be in a hurry. I think a lot of people get distracted on Facebook and they get FOMO and they see other people doing this. Forget that crap. Listen to this podcast, put your head down, grow your business with the right way. With three people, you could be easily, 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 but, but I mean you, a virtual assistant and a lead manager, 
you could be grossing a million dollars, keeping 700,000 of that. Hey, nail that down. Okay. And then let's talk just like I said this. All right. This one's special. Number seven, getting into education, right? I want to be a guru. Now, I know that's ironic. You're listening to me on a podcast, but I got to tell you, I've been doing this business for 22 years. Uh, I've been also podcasting on and off for about 15. I've got an entire team who's running my wholesale business. Um, I make way more money in real estate than I do in education. And so I'm not involved in the day-to-day, -day, but I see way too many people thinking education is like going to be this easy business and they're going to make so much more money from it. And if they're going to make more money teaching wholesaling and doing it, and I got to tell you, I know the numbers and that's just not true. It is not true. I know of a few very, very, very successful teachers and gurus in the business. And that's because they are at the top of the game. They work their tail off. They have the same problems real estate investors have. The grass is not greener on the other side. It's because they put in the work and do the right things. And education is a great business, right? You can make money teaching other people how to make money in real estate. But I got to tell you, there's no like magic formula versus wholesaling. Right now, I can tell you that wholesaling is like a total gift. It is a golden goose that will pay you for your lifetime. So don't lose, okay, your, your focus off of this. I got to tell you, it's, 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 it's a gift. Take care of it. Nurture it. All right. Last one, apartments. I see a lot of people like, oh, I want to get into apartments and ditch my wholesaling business. Okay, Or, or I'm going to wholesale and do apartments at the same time. Okay, I got to tell you. Um, I've got nothing wrong with apartments. I think that's great. As a matter of fact, I invest in mobile home parks. That's what I do. But you ready for this? Uh, again, I have an entire team who runs my wholesaling business. I am not involved in the day-to-day -day anymore. It took me years to get there. Now, obviously, I, I can show you how to get there in a year. What I took me 18 to do. And so my goal is for that. But you have to make sure that your business is profitable and that it's steady, it's predictable. You're not spending a lot of time. And then, and then you move on to that next phase. In that order, let me give you a small hack. When I was building my real estate business, I love mobile home parks. Instead of, instead of going and doing the mobile home park deals, I took my money and I gave it to an expert who was specializing in mobile home parks at the time, right? And I got a return on my money, right? Got a very, very good return on my money. And I got to learn a little bit about the business by watching that person. For me, now I do mobile home parks. That is something I spent a lot of my time doing. And my team does the house business. But it was an order. And I built people and systems. And it wasn't until I was free out of my wholesale business that I moved on. So my recommendation is do not think, okay, I've been successful here. Now I can be successful here. If you want to get involved in that business, by the way, you can always partner with me. Okay, I'm in the mobile home park business. I love it. It's a phenomenal asset, provides phenomenal cash flow. If you're looking to put some of your cash to work, <clears throat> you can just send me an email, support at no limits real estate investing.com, uh, and say, hey, I'd love to partner with you. But if you want to do your own deals, that's okay too. You can also sell me a deal or do the deals yourself. But make sure that you do not let go of this thing that, that took you so much time and energy and momentum to build. Focus on it and it will feed you, okay? It's very, very, very important that you take care of this baby, all right? So I'll review, number one, six success, six success traps, number one, stra <laughs> there we go again, six success traps. Uh, number one, going to a new market. Number two, not watching your profit and loss. Three, talking about your gross revenue versus profit. Four, scaling too quickly, five, trying to get an education, and six, moving into apartments or commercial deals before they've systemized their wholesale business. Focus on the small things. Your business will thank you. You'll make more money in less time, less stress, and I'll tell you what, you have a lot more fun doing it. If you have not been over to our website, don't forget about nextlevelwholesaling.com. Take the assessment, and I will talk to you on the next episode.